Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today it's all about easy, and I mean super easy, chili. Let's get going. All right, when I talk about super easy, I'm talking about this isn't like the long drawn out, make the beans from scratch, hack half of a cow up, all that stuff. So I just got some standard uh, canned items, some ground beef, some seasoning mix, and a little things that we do along the way to make this super, super, super easy. Set number one, I got my Dutch oven going. I got about a tablespoon of butter and we're gonna caramelize about a half an onion. All right, not too much longer after that, you guys can see that we're getting a nice char on these onions. This is the natural caramelization process. Is it 100% worth it? Who knows? I just know that anytime you're allowed to build depth of flavor, I take that opportunity. So the reason why I mentioned that is because of ground beef. A lot of times, if you guys haven't seen it, I think it was on my easy beef and cheese enchiladas that once you take ground beef, or it could have been the pasta, I don't know, one of them. I'm always a big fan of not just browning your ground beef and draining it right away. I want to brown the ground beef, and as the fat comes through it, that's another layer of flavor that you cannot replicate. And so all you're doing is building these flavors. Um, so I'm gonna brown this right now. This is a pack and a half. I say a pack, it's a pound and a half of um, uh, 85, 15 ground beef. So with that, I'm gonna keep all the fat in this. So once we get to the browning stage, everything's done, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how much more longer we keep it in the fat and what happens to it. All right, here we go. So you guys notice the moisture's evaporated out. Now the ground beef is just frying in its own fat. It's been doing that for about 10, 12, 15 minutes, something like that. So it gives you an idea don't drain it if you don't have to. Let all those flavors marry together and it's gonna concentrate on that beef and just have a more deeper flavor. All right, here we go. So this is part of the cheap method. Packet of chili mix. There's about 10,000 varieties out there. They make them spicy, they make them mild. Just find the one that you like and go at it. Typically when I do this, I'm gonna taste it real quick. I don't know why, but I always add my other seasonings to it at this point. You could add another pack if you're gonna to add to it, but this at least gets you over the hump. This is why it's called easy. Mm. All right, paprika. Some oregano, not much on that. Chili powder. That's probably about two tablespoons of chili powder, one tablespoon of paprika. I would say a half a tablespoon of oregano. I'm just gonna come in with just a touch of seasoned salt, not much, just to help it out a little bit. So that's where we are on spices, okay? Don't worry about the fond on the bottom of the pan. You guys know that's caramelization, and once we add all the liquid, that's gonna be absorbed right back into it. All right, here we go. We always use a three-two ratio. No matter what you decide to put in your chili, we use three cans of beans to two cans of tomatoes, always, and the rest of it, is really up to you. Heck, whatever beans you use is up to you. Pinto and kidney for us. And you did not drain the beans. No, I don't. I put it right in there. So what kind of beans do we have? Uh, black, pinto, and kidney, one of each. These are those leftover green chilies we had on that green chili cheeseburger. I'm just gonna throw those in there. Not much heat at all. Is that about one can? Uh, no, that's probably way less. That's probably half of a small can. 
I just did it to get it out of the freezer. All right, here we go. Last, the last step. Basically, as you know, Chili, there's basically two options. What your kids like and what you like. And then it's how thick you like it. We prefer thick chili. That's just my opinion. But my kids will not eat tomatoes in chunks. So I've got to take the next step. And so what I do, I just take the, the tomatoes that I like. I just happen to use stewed and that stuff right there. There's all different types of varieties out there. But like I said, the most important thing is your ratio of three beans, two tomatoes. And oddly enough, the two cans of tomato seems like a lot, but I'm not a tomato fan in chili. I think it's gotta be balanced. So these are the two cans that I like to use. I'm and the kids can't see a chunk of tomato. No, they cannot complain. So basically this is it. Once you bring this up to temperature, your chili is done. Now what I do to let it go further I keep it on a good low heat. You guys can see it's about 147 our time. And I'm gonna let this go for about an hour on medium low stirring, not a constantly, but occasionally so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And we're gonna reduce this down. But you guys can see how hearty and meaty that is, how thick it's getting. Once you reduce it down, it's gonna get a little bit thicker. That's just taking the natural moisture out of the beans and out of the tomatoes. We'll show you guys the final product. But other than that, that's it. All right, there you go, guys. It's uh, cooled down just a little bit. We've reduced it for about an hour and a half. Like I said, I like my chili a little bit thicker. And you can see, look at all that. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Now, anybody knows that this bite's going to be hot as sin, so. Mm. Put that bad boy over a tamale. Mm. That's it. Easy chili. Don't make it difficult. Add the ingredients. What do you think? 45 minutes, chili's done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends.